is Thunder Politics live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimalo in Abuja. The federal government is accusing the Canadian government and Twitter of double standards in the way they classify violent protesters in Nigeria and in the West, Western climb. The Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohamed, made the accusation at a media briefing in his hometown of Oro in Kwara State where it was reacting to the unfolding event in Canada where truckers are protesting over COVID-19 vaccine mandates and other COVID-19 restrictions. Elijah Mohammed says Canada and Twitter, which had called the hoodlums, would destroy public and private properties in Nigeria during the ends of peaceful protesters, turn around to tag similar protesters in their own countries as insurrections, insurrectionists and terrorists. Take a listen to the minister. During the NSAS protests, which culminated in the blockage of public roads and massive destruction of government and private property, Canada was one of the countries that spoke out in support of the protesters. Recall also that Twitter actively supported the NSAS protesters and even raised funds, while GoFundMe was used to raise funds for the protesters. These are the same entities that are now rushing to distance themselves from the protests in Canada and even denying them the use of their platforms. This is similar to what played out during the January 6, 2021 insurrection at the US Capitol in Washington, DC, where those involved are either still being investigated or have been charged to court. I don't blame them. Nobody wants their country destroyed by the guys of protest. That's the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, speaking uh, on what is happening in Canada, making comparison to what is happening in Nigeria and how some people outside of the shows have uh, perceived the situations. Well, let's shift our attention to our main, uh, one of our main focus for tonight. It's about the ruling of Progressive Congress, APC. The APC is gearing up for its national convention, which it says will hold on the 26th of this month. In that light, the Governor Buni led caretaker committee has sent out a notification to the national convention of proposed amendments to the APC constitution some areas under consideration for that constitutional review include National Advisory Council to replace the Board of Trustees, creation of Zona Congress, clarify ambiguities in the Constitution, fill gaps that became apparent, recognize and expand platforms for participation of critical groups such as women, youth, and persons with disabilities, and several other areas that have been highlighted by the Governor Boone led Catholic Committee which they said they will look into um, touching it up because since 2014 or so, they've really not done anything to review that constitution. Meanwhile, that effort is seen is not properly handled as a sitting member of the House of Representatives who's uh, representing Lagos State and the House of Reps, Honorable Jide Jimon, has challenged the process and has disagreed with some areas tonight. We'll be hearing from Honorable Jire Jima, who joins us here in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Honorable, for coming tonight. Thank you very much, Shil. You had a release today. You made a statement, a press statement, to say that what is happening in respect of the amendment to the planned and proposed amendment, because what we saw was a notification to the convention by the Catechal Committee of the intention to review the Constitution. But you say you're not, you not happy. Yeah, thank Why? you very much, Shil. First and foremost, I give thanks to Almighty God, the ruler of heaven and the earth, who has given me the opportunity to serve my people in Lagos, Milan, Lagos State, and Nigeria as a whole. Having said that, I want to commend our party for having considered it good to amend the constitution that has been placed since 2014. Uh, however, there are some areas that have a disagreement. And that disagreement has to do with the one that concerned the National Assembly members, both former and serving. We are, they are proposing that 
National Assembly, we only be represented by the principal officers. That's, it's not too good for us. Okay, so let's convention. get it clearly. Let's get it clearly. Have you seen the proposed draft? Of course, that has been sent out. The proposed the draft proposed has been draft. sent out, of course. So in, in the proposed draft, uh, you as a sitting member of the House will no longer be a delegate to the convention. After this one. After this 26th of, of uh, February. February. So if what obtains at the end of the day? What obtains is that, that former, governors, former governors, former governor, former deputy and current gov governor, former deputy, deputy governor, governors, and current deputy governor, all of them will be there, including secretary to the government of federation. Former that ones will be there, both former and current. Okay. So and former and members of the national assembly have not been there before. Former members of former the national assembly have been there before, mm -hmm. and current is been there. Yeah. Now they will not be there with that proposal. It is not too good. We are talking of convention. We must allow people to participate. What are we believing as if we are military? Military will come and suspend the constitution. After the suspension of government, they will just proscribe the, the parliament. It's like they are planning to get rid of the parliament as a whole. How many of us in the House? How many of us in the Senate? They ought not to have proposed that at all. They should have allowed the serving and current to be part and part of the convention committee. That's I mean, the only grass you have. That's the grass right. I have. Okay, I so commended him for having that because in accordance with Section 30, Article 33 of the Constitution, I mean, of, uh, of the party, we can amend. But Article 12, Subsection 1, is where I, have, I, I completely agree, disagree with the party, that they cannot use that or not. It's like they are, they are getting rid of the members of the National Assembly. Why should you do that? Have you we are that? representing the national. That's why they call us National Assembly. That's the federal legislator. So you cannot the, in, be excluded from the convention of the, of, of the party. The, the, take note that we are not the only political party in Nigeria. We are so many number of political parties in Nigeria. Members of the National Assembly, they are all part and parcel of the convention. Why should I all be different so let's as a party that people love? Okay, people, I mean, that, 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 of course. that is a statement of fact. Oh, it's a, it's a statement of fact. Okay, that people love your party. Yes, yes. Okay, election determines that. Yeah, there's no problem <laughs> on that. If we campaign and tell people what we have done. Okay, so um, I look at this and I'm wondering, uh, maybe when drafters of constitution sit down and the draft, they may see reason why they need to tweak, change, if that existed and they're planning to change it, they might have some reasons. Have you tried to communicate with those who are working on it? I know Professor Tahi Maman is leading the I team. I have written a letter to the chair marketing committee okay. to that respect. Mm -hmm. there might be, is that it might be an error of omission or commission, but that has been pointed out that on no account, member of National Assembly should not be excluded because we call it national convention and they are representing national level, national legislator federal legislator, why should they be taken away from what is called federal or national convention? They should be part and parcel of that convention. That's what I'm saying. So uh, the process of... That's the essence the of being the legislator at the federal level. The process of uh, uh, reviewing the, uh, the constitution has that process been announced? Because it was it only the, been announced no, already. the notification that is the what has been The notification has been announced. People have laid hand on those things. I am now telling you that section 12, article, I mean, article 12, sec, uh, section 1 of that proposed one, they are planning to take away the members of the National Assembly away from it, except the prison officers. As statutory delegates. Yeah, exactly, as statutory delegates. And we have been there before today. I've been issue. In, I mean, including powers of attendance and powers of election. Of course, yes. If you, don't, if you, can, if you cannot attend, you can't elect. You have to be part. That is why you are being called federal legislator. Have you been able to ask the reason why they are doing that? No, that's why I've written that letter. And I know by the time they sit down and read the letter, they'll be able to divert, uh, digest it very well and, and make a decision. But before a decision can be made, it's better for you to point out that error. So I mean, for those who say that, uh, that, ex that process is too hasty, that I mean, they should take their time and not be in a hurry because it looks like 
And from those who are criticizing the exercise, said, look, it looks like the Governor Bruni led Kataka Committee wants to deliver a new constitution to the party, but there's no hurry in it. A new uh, National Working Committee can do that after they, they are inaugurated. Do you, do you agree and to that? Any organization can come out to amend its constitution. Nigeria today, we are planning to amend our constitution. There's nothing wrong in that. But in amending your constitution, ensure you tarry a while, plan very well, go to the drawing board and resketch your plan as to assist and get out with something meaningful and not something that will deter others from being participating. So that's just it. Maybe uh, one may also look at it in this manner. The party is planning to also rec uh, rejig or recreate or, or add reorganize or the, or reorganize the, the structure because yeah. there were no zonal structures before. Yeah. I mean, zonal congresses now it's going to be part of the constitution. Uh, you had a board of trustees, but people will say it never functioned uh, as I mean, structurally or practically speaking. But the party now says it wants to change the name. And perhaps we've seen, we're going to see a new structure of the BOT, which is going to transfuse into something else. Maybe you guys are going to be in the, uh, in, in the BOT. It's not even the proposed plan. It's not there. No, it's not there at all. I've gone through the whole process of the whole pro uh, proposed plan. What is important is that all those things they have introduced, fine. But the other one is what I'm completely against. We cannot take that. Let's, let's allow Why are we being called federal legislator? And I want to exclude us from the convention. Let's allow Nigerians to see yes. again what the, the, uh, uh, the areas to be amended in the APC constitution looks like. Uh, part of the areas is to, there's some, uh, th they said they want to clarify ambiguities in the constitution. Uh, they also plan to fill gaps that have become apparent um, because this exercise has not held in almost eight years. Uh, the constitution has been the way it is for eight years. Uh, the party is also saying that they want to recognize and expand platforms for participation of critical groups like uh, women, youth, and persons with disabilities. Also, they hope to change uh, the board of trustees. Uh, the nomenclature will change. They place the board of trustees under the, a new title called National Advisory Council. Now streamline memberships and clear powers and function. Then also create zonal congresses. And these are some of the areas that uh, the party says that it wants to uh, look into. But if you look at uh, uh, all, of, all of these, uh, okay, so there are clearer accountability by organs of the party, new organs for efficient administration, clarified powers of the National Assembly Committee. These are the areas that they hope to fix or review. Now, if you look at all of these areas that the party says it wants to work on, how do you hope that you want to, them to retain it or to review it? No, we, we, what the we, area relating to the National Assembly members and former National Assembly members. You see, what, what I'm saying is this. The word national means federal. People have been elected to the federal level to make law. Why do you want to exclude them from participating in the convention of your party? What's the essence of being there? We can't be behaving as if we are military people. Military will come, take away the constitution, and, and proscribe the National Assembly. Parliament will always suffer. Why is it that our own party will now come out to say that majority of the National Assembly will not be part of the Convention Committee? As a committee? member of the caucus in the National Assembly, have you guys discussed it? We will discuss it. That's the, we have started the process. A letter has been written. People have been complaining. People have been talking. Okay. And it's good for us to talk so that at the end of the day, we get the way out. Another person that may be affected by that clause is uh, Senator Abubakar Gada, who has since joined us, a former member of the National Assembly. If that clause... If you're not going to be there again. You will not be able to be there. <laughs> but Senator Gada, thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, Honorable Jure Juma is really upset about uh, that clause. What, what's your view on that? Constitutional amendment is a routine thing, even though uh, for a while it has not been affected uh, with regards to constitution of APC, but it's a, it's, it's a continuous thing. Uh, there's no cause for alarms, no comes. Uh, it's a public document, it will be subjected to uh, other processes and uh, uh, approval levels. 
uh, it, com it, it comes into effect after the convention would have approved of it. So uh, whoever has any reservations and uh, contentions, as the case may be, is uh, to mobilize and ensure that uh, the popular views and voices prevails at the point of approval. So I think uh, there should be no issue in the proposal. No, nothing wrong with any propositions. The committee was set up and they have done what in their best ability uh, uh, has shown that this is the best they could uh, produce and uh, for the for the for the party and indeed for Nigerians. So it, it I mean, Senator, that if this go, uh, goes through um, this particular clause, you will not be able to attend the convention. No, it is from... it is not uh, it's not as simple as that. You but see, that's what it means, isn't it? No, look, that if um, former after national members after the after the constitution has been passed mm. at the convention and ratified, it then means that it's law for the party members. It, so means, it, it means, then means that you as a former member of the National Assembly, yeah. you will no longer be a statutory member to the convention. What it means uh, is that there are certain level of uh, a reduction in number. Just you, you have already itemized the justifications. It to reduce a particular size in order to attract new membership. Uh, I, for one, uh, Mr. Seon, uh, I don't see it anything different from what we have on ground. Uh, PDP's constitution that has been operating for two decades now is like that. Not all National Assembly members are automatic delegates to their convention. But they're statutory. No. They're yeah. statutory. They're statutory. No, no. In the PDP, in yes. the PDP condition, they're no. They're me, me, no. former no. members of House no. of Reps, former, former National former Assembly member. members, no. are sitting as statutory to the convention. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, they check the constitution well. That, I think, uh, operates. Uh, yeah. At least I've yeah. monitored several because of the PDP Because I, I knew I was in National Assembly uh, and uh, some activities of the party. I mean, we are actually not automatic uh, in terms of uh, membership. So you think what the APC is doing right now is perfect? No, There's nothing wrong with it? There's nothing perfect anywhere, Mutasio. But we are saying that uh, if this is a popular view, it will come to pass. How do you think it's popular? If, if, How do you I'm test asking, the popularity? Say, fine. Good. If it's a committee that is drafting it. It's a, a committee, uh, but that's what I'm saying. If there's a popular view, it will come to pass because it will be subjected to what? Convention. Convention must approve of it. And already, my brother, Honorable Member, already they have filed an agitation calling for the expungement uh, uh, of that aspect that uh, in their considered view uh, suggests exclusion, in which uh, the size, if you look at the membership, from 1960 to date, every parliamentarian who remains a member of the who is a member of the party, you know, is a delegate to convention. In the extant law or extant regulations, so until this is passed by the convention, it will never replace what we have on ground. Mm. So if this number is such a huge and gargantuan. Uh, one will have no fear that if the wisdom of the committee are set up by the party and the different stages of approval as enshrined in the constitution have fallen short of the popular expectations and will of the party members in the at the convention level it will be reversed because uh, i'll allow you honorable Jimon, to uh, to respond to what senator gada said but the, the, the consideration now is that when it comes to taking the powers voting powers of a member of a political party is concerned, isn't that too far? Isn't that too extreme? Uh, when you take away the power of Because a... what you have explained is that maybe the, con the consideration of the drafters are that there will be too much, if you say, former members of the National Assembly from 1960 to date, <laughs> that might be too much. Uh -huh. But, I mean, to the extent that... If you exclude them, you have taken also their powers, their voting powers away from them. 
So that part of our, I mean, the, the, the ability to attend is on, on one hand, uh -huh. the power to vote is another thing, uh -huh. which is very paramount. So, you see, constitution is a document. Like you rightly observe, there is no perfect document anywhere. This, this amendment is incremental issues. It comes, you know, as the views and the agitations, you know, uh, swell. All right. It will now come to fruition that an item of such will now be included in the deliberation, discussions, and the proposal, mm. uh, propositions for amendment. So uh, be that as it may, uh, we are going towards convention. And the uh, Nigerians is, and the party members particularly, it's up to them to understand the implication of this. All right. Let me allow Honorable Jimmy to respond to no, that. Why, why do you have to go to go for national convention and take away national legislator away from there? We, and now introduce secretary to the government of federation to be part of convention. This is secretary to the government of federation that has never been elected. I now want to bring him in and take away those that have been elected that have the power of people from the various level down to the national level away from the system. It's never it's, it's not the best system. All right. so, so that's but, why we must not wait on that is done. He has rightly pointed out. That's why we have written, we are complaining, we want to put it to them, across to them, and tell them this is wrong. This is the way how. It's based on what Senator Gada said yes. in terms of the numbers. Yes. So if you look at every there are, there's been eight, uh, nine, we're on the ninth National Assembly yes, now. Yes, yes. So if you look at that number from 1960, yes. if you say former... 1960, how, how many of them were in the National Assembly as, as 1960? So if he's, if he's saying that the numbers are going to be too much... Has there been any political party that controlled the entire National Assembly? No. It has been very... PDP, UPN, Action Congress, this and that, and they might not even belong to the same party. So the number of people that fall into PDP, we go for PDP. The one that fall within the APC, we go for APC. The one that is in P APGA, we go for APGA. You should not do away with whatever thing you think we bring a, 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 a better system. When people have been elected, you must take the value of that election. That shows the person is very popular. Now want to, we now want to have your convention, called national convention, we want to take away Federal legislator, parliament, away from it. It's never done anywhere. All right. The award. Even the United States of America, they respect the Congress people. You must respect that parliament. You think that your party has sidelined the Congress? I mean, I have not said they have sidelined. They are planning to do that through that proposal, and we must call, call them they, to order. If they go ahead and do it, what would you do? No, just wait and see. There's nothing we can do, but. What something else will come up? Do you think that there is something that is fishy about this? Plan? I cannot say, but we have to point it to them that this is what is happening. We must not do this because of this, because of that. Would you say that the party is not sensitive to the feelings and, and they are the not, agitation? They are not sensitive to the feelings and the agitation of the National Assembly. How can you take them away from it? It's not. It's never done anywhere. Has this been the the, the behavior of the, the the leadership of the party? No, no, no. I don't. They have just started this. I've been issue we have been part and parcel of the system. But after this convention, after this approval, if that is done, that's the end of the issue. And because I'm the, not fighting for myself. I know. And I'm not the fighting question for I'm those that have become uh, after an, us. Another question, Honorable, yeah. is that, I mean, in the, in the last few years of our democracy, we see how robust the engagement with the caucuses yes. in the National Assembly yes, is. Yes. But I'm not sure that has happened so much in the no, party. No, it, it, it has happened. The, the, Senate president, the, the Senate president and the speaker, they come into this and we discuss an issue, as they have rightly pointed out. I'm saying the caucus is engagement with the executive, our caucus, politically the speaking. Party. Our caucus will engage the party okay. before the convention. They will engage the party before the convention. And I know something will happen. Okay. And he has said it, that when we get to convention and we have the popular opinion, you can imagine that number that has been existing now, come to that convention and say no to that... Uh, uh, amendment. What do you think will happen? That will be the end of the issue. Well, but in order not to allow that to happen, let us resolve amicably 
and get this done. No, you right usually perspective. review to constitution are never put to vote on the grounds of the convention. No, 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 it's a yes or no. It's, 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 it's usually by yes voice no. votes. Yes. So in in that sense, the, the presiding, presiding officer may not even hear you from the stand be, be, when you say no. Be, and then <laughs> the people will not hear you that what is what has happened. <laughs> and when, yeah. it is, when it is ratified and passed, they move to the next item. But they, they, they'll be on, it's going to be on record that somebody somewhere has pointed it out before now. If anything happens at the end of the day, they will know. Okay, let me ask so that we can wrap up now and allow Senator Gada also to weigh in on this. Should your party consider a consensus system towards that uh, convention? Anything can happen. But what do you direct, think? You've been direct, in politics for, consensus, for several years. Of course, now. yes. What do you think will favor your party? Should, can your party afford? to go for an elective process to that convention? Wouldn't it be rancorous? I think it depends on the choice of people. It depends on the choice of people. If we agree today amicably and resolve, this is the way forward. That's, that, that, it will go that way, and nothing will happen. Because we, that way, happen. we see a, a lot of division in your party already. So the affairs you of the members... You are that. No, 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 no. I mean, it's what is obvious. I mean, I'm not a member of your party, but we are watching you from the sidelines. And we're you are seeing, now saying that you We're saying see there's that. a lot of division in your party. We and the fear seen, some of the leaders of your party no, have is that your party cannot afford to go into that convention uh, without having to do consensus. I'm not... That is I, going to I, divide I want your to party tell you forward. now, I have not perceived that to happen. Senator you can see some kinds of agreement and disagreement, which has happened everywhere, even in the family home. That is bound to, to happen. But the most important thing is that we will come out on the 26th of this of February in, in victorious. Senator Gada, what's your view? Consensus should it be considered greatly for for the convention? What I have in in what is on ground uh, consensus, direct and indirect, <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> if the law recognizes these three options. You allow them to happen through the normal uh, exhaustive uh, processes. Whatever is in the larger interest, in the best interest of the party, is what will prevail. And you will also join us in celebrating. No, no, no. I never do that. I don't celebrate with politicians. Uh, I, I, then, don't, then, I don't then, celebrate with politicians. Then what means you don't celebrate with the public? No, no, no. I mean, the public are different from you folks in your no, party. No, no, no. We when are... you do your party things, you can celebrate with in your uh, in your in no, your no. in your circle. But, but you you are, you, as you a journalist, I celebrate with my colleagues as uh, journalists. No, 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 I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so on a final note, uh, for those who fear that if you go for an elective process in that election, are they making sense to you, Senator? That what? That the party should consider consensus. No, Do, nobody, does it make sense? Nobody says your party should consider consensus as a matter of final option. What we are saying, one of the reasons why the agitation for multiple options mm, mm -hmm. has been aggressively uh, pursued, and today we have that re as a reality. Mm. Yeah, that is what Nigerians will want being seen, tested. You see, why you a consensus will give you the best result? In that particular circumstance, you go for it. If it is direct, it will give you what you need as a, the most legitimate uh, so result. You go for it. If indirect will give you that legitimacy and acceptability from the products or outcome of whatever is being produced, you go for it. The most important thing in a democratic engagement is multiplicity in options. And then you examine what you think should be the case in each uh, particular circumstance. I wish your party the very best. And uh, when you get things right, uh, rejoice very well in your circle. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, no. be, we'll watch you from we'll, the circle. We'll, invite, the, you. The, we'll uh, invite you for, for to no, rejoice. No, no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't because, join, because I don't join politicians are, to rejoice. You are. There's a lot of implications to you. Are, you know, but thank you so much, Senator Fakar. And our Thank you. Thank thank you I appreciate much. it. We'll mm -hmm. take a break, everyone. And when we return, the Aina Correct 40 FCT Aladi Yaya Bello joins us alongside Mr. Ezenwa Uwagu. Both of them will be taking an assessment of the FCT election and the lessons ahead of Ikiti and Oshun elections. So with us, everyone, we'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared results in the six areas of the FCT area council elections where elections are held yesterday. The FCT election is the first INEC election that will be conducted this year, 2022, ahead of the governorship elections in Ekiti and Oshun State. In the light of the adjustments made to uh, some of the processes of the election, the commission is also making uh, looking forward to the electoral process and anticipation of the electoral amendment exercise. Well, how did INEC fare yesterday? Take a look at how this it looks like uh, the, three, uh, the two major political parties have uh, uh, shared these, uh, the, the, um, the outcome of this election. APC3, PDP won three area council elections. So you can see the breakdown of how elections went there but in the overall picture how did the exercise go if you look at some of the pictures of uh, what happened yesterday basically the local council election in the fct is the only local government election that INEC conducts in the 36 states and the fct in the states uh, local uh, council election the state CEC, the state electoral commission conducts um, uh, the local uh, the local government elections. The boy for the FCT is a special kind of election, if you may regard it as such, because INEC as a national body conducts that exercise. But how does how did INEC fare yesterday in terms of security, deployment of materials, uh, the effectiveness of uh, the beavers, the which is going to be now be at the fulcrum, the spine of our elections. I'm now being joined tonight to discuss these issues. The INEC rec for the FCT. Alaji Yaya Bello. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Rick. Thank you very much, Yaya. Thank you. And also a member of the board of Yaga Africa, Mr. Izenwa Mwago. Thank you so much, Mr. Mwago, for coming tonight. Maybe we should uh, <laughs> hear the assessment <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of the Rick. First and foremost, um, how would you assess the exercise yesterday? Let's hear from you. Uh, what, what can you tell us about the result? All the results have been announced so far. What can you tell us? Uh, thank you very much, uh, John. All I can say is that uh, we prepared for this election. We conducted the election. The election has been concluded. Results have been announced, as you have already said so. And uh, that is uh, how it is. That is my own assessment. First of all, we prepared very well for this election. And it was a large turnout you know, for this election. People really turned out to vote in the FCT. They casted their votes, their cows, their votes counted, you know, and uh, we announced this result. It was, uh, to me, that is it. That is my assessment is that it was, you know, it was, uh, it was free and fair, you know, and, uh, and people turn out. And it was well prepared election. So we have three local governments, we have, uh, we have councils three, for uh, the PDP. Can and, you give uh, us a breakdown of that? You know, LPS, uh, before the election, you know, PDP had only two uh, uh, chairmanship uh, positions, but now they share three three. Now the PDP has won in won in Kujie and Buari, and also have won in Amak. Uh, APC has won in as they won in Kuali, and they have. Uh, Rewon also in Abaji, in and uh, they rewon also, you know, in Wagwalada. Okay, yeah. but APC lost Amak. The APC lost Amak. Amak. So Amak is the center, is the city center. In the city center. That's, where, that's the Abuja municipal. That's the where the local government council, where the president, the villa is, and uh, the national assembly and all the rest. No, the that when you talk about uh, Amak, that is the. Uh, Abuja Metropolis, you know, uh, that is where. So invariably, is a PDP local government council chairman for the president's home. No, <laughs> no, that that's not. It. I'm just trying. Uh, that, I'm just trying not to pull your legs. That's not in Ine. That's what it means. <laughs> no, in Ine, you know, in Ine, it means that uh, the PDP has won the Abuja municipal. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> what it is. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of your deployment. What was the problem? There was no problem. As far as I'm concerned, you know, you have said so. The, this election is the election that is conducted 
the only election in this country that has been conducted by INEC. The national chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and the national commission has said so several times that this is the INEC election. This is the only election that conduct for the local government. Nothing you know, was short in supply to prepare for this election. All the funds that were needed to conduct the election were there. All the materials were deployed. As of two weeks ago, we had more than 97% of non-sensitive materials delivered to all the area councils. Mm. On Friday, you know, on Thursday, we collected the sensitive materials from the CBN. That is the ballot uh, papers and the result sheets. All right, Rick. Let me allow uh, the independent observer who monitored the deed. Uh, I must sort of commend your organization for the sensitization that you, you did proud before the election to make people to come out and also uh, monitoring the election. But from your own point of view, the assessment of the reg, is it different from your own assessment? Yes, it's miles apart. It's, it's quite miles apart. And that is because uh, Shane, you know that uh, local council elections uh, are the, the, the place where our people should learn democracy through participation. And when INEC gets to the point where it celebrates outcomes and not the integrity of the process, then there's a challenge. Um, because you, you cannot um, get into this uh, chest thumbing when it was evident to everybody that first, first and very clearly the, 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 the new pride for all of us, the new pride for all of us, the beavers, you were in Anambra, we were together there. If you felt that it was a challenge in Anambra, it was a debacle in Abuja. It was a, it was a major problem. It was a, a real issue. But we understand that there were about two that were provided in each police. There, there were technical, very technological glitches that are very clear, that are evident. People, it's, some are even scandalous that we, 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 can't, we can't start talking about where people saw their names on the, on the online platform and they cannot find their name on the register. These are very clear issues. The issue of, of the, new, the, new, the new polling units that were created, where you have people, people couldn't, within the period, they, there was no, they, to find out where they were going to vote was a challenge because you had many of those polling units, not even dis, voters are not distributed to them. In terms of uh, deployment and early start to the exercise, uh, because in a lot of places that we covered, we discovered that the exercise didn't commence until about 10 a.m. That is what I'm telling you. If so logistics-wise, if your punctuality index is, it has issues, and like I keep telling you, the problem with public institutions in Nigeria is that they do what I call defensive public relations. Oh, there was no problem. No, there, are, there were problems, clear problems. And what is important for us is that there are arguments there are people who make the argument that, oh, INEC should take over conducting local government elections all over the country. And then we saw INEC do that in six local governments and the same logistic challenges that, we've, that, are, that are associated with even our own elections still happened in FCT. There was, so the lesson to learn from that is that what are those, what, what is the, where is the need for an audit? Where do we have to do a comprehensive audit at this point? To look at, because you are looking at Oshun, um, Ekiti, Oshun, and, and then 2023. If Beavers had issues in Anambra and there is still that large hue and cry about its performance, you need to do some introspection. And we may not have the, la uh, the latitude to provide as much as two Beavers for, 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 for the, in And then beyond that, even the deployment, there were issues of we are trained people, we are withdrawn, and, and, and untrained people were ever used for the elections. There are many issues, but you see, so, and those issues have been spotlighted. It is not to um, escorate the, the, the tendency to feel that, oh, we conducted, the, we deployed, in terms of, we visited those local councils, uh, people were there when the materials were distributed. I personally went to Guagulada to look at the level of preparedness, and when I came out, I said, it does appear that INEC 
is prepared for this election. I'm, I am one who is very optimistic about the capacity, the competencies that are within INEC to deliver. So when this shortcoming happens, it, it makes some of us look look very, very, you know, uh, because we go out there, you saw us in the field telling mm -hmm. people, come out and vote. We went to the market, and, and then, then, you know, we, two, we of the of people, two of the people who mm -hmm. went for that voter ed education outreach could not vote themselves personally mm -hmm. on so, account of the challenges that I'm so, talking about. So it's... it's, it's we'll really allow uh, the rec to respond to some of this issue, and we'll take them one after the other. But one area <laughs> that INEC doesn't have control over and which you did a good job, I must say, uh, is asking people to come out. Did people, how was the turnout? Because that is the, that is the issue with the voters. Did they come out? Well, if, you know that we have a challenge of, you know, voting is not compulsory in our country. That's, it is always going to put that out. That is a vote. People, you have, so you have to persuade people. So uh, there is anger, people are talking about how government is not working for them and all of those things. So when you meet them in the field, you are talking about the quality, the value of their citizenship, which is expressed by this being part of the leadership recruitment process. So we, we've tried the much that we can. There was actually very low. And the investment in local council elections, even by agencies, are also not, and, and even donors and civil society are not as they should be when you have state elections. Do you, so, think, do you think that as part of the franchise as captured in the constitution, there should be some incentives to citizens to encourage them to come out? I, I think that the Because power, it's becoming I, abysmal by the, by the year. I mean, every election cycle, you discover that it's gone from about 40-something percent in the 2007, 2015, to about 30 something percent in several See, shall, 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 shall we, we cannot make, let's not make this excuse for why people, there are many reasons. But let me tell you, people go for what they understand and how much they think that is of value. There are people who still commit money to what in reality they use their own money. There is, there is a musician that will come to Abuja now, okay? And table is 500, this is that, this is that, 1 million. And the whole street will be And down. everywhere is locked down. And the man says, I'm a madman. And, and he, he expresses it in the way he pleases. And people, the whole place. And then the one that has the, these six area councils that we are talking about, by virtue of the constitution, get their resources directly. Mm. There is no midway. So monies in this local government are spent on your behalf what, without your being interested in it. And, for, and you want incentive, you want somebody to give you incentive. Perhaps for, to for, for someone who was supposed to be out yesterday and didn't come out, the essence of some of this education, voter education, is the fact that you have missed out in being part of the most important aspect of governance in Nigeria, which is the, the closest uh, governance structure to any, any citizen. So many of but us don't know that local governments have a budget, on. that they spend through a budget. But we talk about national budget. We, we, if there is going to be a, uh, whatever the, the appropriation bill, all of us focus on it. But these local governments, whether governors hijack their money or not, and the one that gets to it directly, they spend money right. on me and on behalf of both of us. I mean, I, I'm personally saying this because uh, I want to, us to see an election in AKT or Shunsel where people can come out. Based on the number of voters that we have come out and exercise, you can't complain in your corners and say uh, things are not working if you don't come out to exercise your franchise. Let's take up a few of the issues that you have raised. First and foremost, on the issue of deployment, uh, REC, um, there were late um, starts to the exercise. What caused it? Uh, you had logistic problems. No, you know my uh, my friend here from uh, Yaga. You know, I mean, I was waiting for him. Then he differentiated between deployment and uh, a challenge from uh, a gadget. So he started as say to me talking about uh, deployment. We deployed uh, very well. If, if, for example, if he had seen, he has uh, observed that uh, there was a late deployment in one place or the other. That is another issue. But generally, we deployed in good time. I, for example, I was able to go early in the morning. In fact, some of our own ad hoc staff, they left their, you know, uh, rack uh, camp at around uh, 6 in the morning, some 5.30 in the morning. We deployed very well. When you talk about, uh, you have to differentiate between development, deployment, and the uh, challenge 
either first from a machinery. Okay, so before that we is, go into the beavers, the challenge for, with beavers. Yes. In a lot of places that we visited as, yes. as China television, yes. I mean, uh, apart from what he yes. even observed, mm -hmm. from all our own observation, we saw that exercise didn't start until about 10 a.m. in most places. Uh, when you said most places, that's the most places that have gone. We I visited think. in Kwagolada. Yes. We visited Amak. We visited Buari. Yes. Right here. And there are a lot of places that exercise did not commence until 10 a.m. Okay. What, what do you think was, was the cause? Uh, because we understand that there was a curfew between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. That's true. So, the, I mean, movement around wouldn't have delayed your, your deployment? Not at all. Like I said, you know, like you know that uh, before the election, just a day before the election, the election night, all these ad hoc staff, they sleep in rags. The vehicles stay with them. Every material is distributed in the night. There is no reason why should, there should be any... But is there any lesson that, you can take away from this? Uh, the, if you are to do this thing, uh, maybe again tomorrow, is there something that you should have done differently? Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. We'll see why there was such a gap. But like I said, we have noticed. You know, me, I rely now on people who have seen. You know, well, this I, is, uh, like, logistics has always been a problem with INEC. Uh, 2011, 2015, 2019. Major election, on election day, things will just fall fall flat on their face. Yeah, but, and people will find it difficult to explain what has gone wrong. I mean, he mentioned the issue of uh, uh, exchanging ad hoc uh, uh, officials uh, at, right at the polling unit. Uh, no, no, no. What happened? No, no. That is, uh, I, I have no idea about this. You don't have an idea? No way. Uh, let me tell you. You know, let me tell you, if we have such a case, mm. we'll look into it very seriously. Because my own, you know, a, a, you know my, somebody who is my cousin is here. He conducted uh, this election as an SPO in 2019. He applied, you know, we opened a portal this time around. He applied through the portal. And he conducted this election very well. He got a reply from the portal, you know, and he was invited to come for a trainee. He didn't. He was far away. He came back. He wanted to come and do the work. After the training, I refused. I declined. I can even call his name off this record. So, and also, you know, my own son. He was, you know, I mean, he well, wanted, wanted said, to be part of it. I, and so, I, I, excuse me. I said no. So I made sure that the deployment of people are those that have trained. Um, let me tell you something. If I discovered that there were substitutions, you know, we will find out how it came about. Because we, after the training, the required number of uh, ad hoc staff that we wanted, that is about 11,700, we also train 5% as a contingency, so that in case there's any need for any uh, absent uh, right. ad hoc staff, maybe, we may, will do this. So, maybe when you call back your staff yes. and you make a, a general review, maybe you might find some of these issues. Abs but what uh, about the beavers? What explanation? to the failure of the, of the beavers. I, excuse me, you know that uh, the beaver is a technical issue. I'm, uh, I'm a wreck, you know. How can I explain a failure of a machinery? You know, but, but, but you, 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 <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, like, you, you like, like but when you election. say, but, on, but I supervise this election. I have gone around, I have seen where beavers walked. I have seen where it worked slowly. I have seen where it didn't work at all. So there was no, one way. Traffic. Was it a weather problem? No. Was it electricity? Was it network issue? What, what, what caused that? The delay, the late, or the, or the, the ones that are not working at all? That's, what caused it? You see, we have a, an army of architects that were trained before the election so that if there's any problem with the viva, they will go and look at it. Right. They went because we want to take they, lesson away they, from they, this they, one they to, went, to correct. They, they went round, you know, I wouldn't. If I go, I wouldn't know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. If you go, you wouldn't know exactly as a journalist what's wrong with the people. So, but what a right track, you know, this is something technical. This is something that, you know, our technicians, our engineers, they will look at it. All right, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Okay, so um, CDD, Situation Room, Yaga Africa, CTA, many organizations were accredited by INEC to observe these elections. And the reports of those um, observation have come out. The value of it is that INEC can then um, take the opportunity to have a, 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 an internal audit of the processes. What are the things that went wrong? Channels, you went round. 
journalists were everywhere. They were calling us, they are asking us, you know, you came, you are defending this, but this is what is happening in the field. And the, the, we need to look at the, our technology. We need to go back. There needs to be an interrogation. Otherwise, we may have a crisis in our hand. In, in, we can shine, a pattern can emerge, where you go to Undo and it does well. And then we say, oh, we are prepared for 2023. And we get into 2023 and then it's, Everything it's, it's flat. flat. We need to have a very serious firewall around the, what the challenge is on, on the technology that we, we are deploying. Process is the key. It's not the outcome. I, I see a concentration on process, on, on outcomes. Outcome, oh, 3-3, three, three, they have shared it 3-3, three, three, and then the integrity of election has more to do with, look at what security did in Abuja, for instance. If you brought out a, a, a notice that you have lifted restriction, and then just a few hours after that, that confusion itself May, may cause a lot of trouble. It's also a, a lot of trouble. The management of the communication. The of, man, of management of that security. The, the, it was everywhere. Oh, lift, it's been lifted. People who had things to do. We, it would have also been a good opportunity to test out, you know, not shutting, shutting down. Shutting down the city see, when there is an see, uh, we, Because there are a lot of lessons that yeah. needs, needs to be learned. All right, we need to yeah. close now. In 30 seconds, uh, Alaji, if you can give us your final thought. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the... The value that we drive from observers, from stakeholders, is that whatever they have seen, you know, is always a credit that we can take. Because if we if they criticize the process or they observe the process and make inputs, then it is for us to look into what they have said, see the credibility of what they have said, the substance in what they have said, and so that we can take it and use it and utilize it in order for a better performance next time. You know, they are not uh, a, a critics for nothing. They observe, they look at things. We can look at what they have said, we can digest it, you know, we can prepare for it. But you know, this is the policy of INEP, you know, taking into cognizance inputs from those who have seen, and then we can develop something. Right. We cannot do it. Well, that's why we have so many other barriers, uh, critical right. stakeholders. So we need to go now. Your, your final thought? Oh, it's, it's for our people to, to understand that there is value in this citizenship mm -hmm. and voting is an essential vehicle for expressing that. I'm most sincerely thank you, Mr. Izen Wawago. I, I know the lessons for it because we're preparing for 2023 election, and this is the year a lot of issues will come to the table, and I'm very sure that we'll be reviewing some of these things more and more. Thank you so much, Alaji. It's good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate and uh, Well done. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shimon Kimale. Bye-bye.